Hi everyone, uh, Joe and I are back again today talking about a, uh, a model that we can use to look at emotional intelligence. And this is particularly relevant in the development of leaders and teams and individuals in work, but also in the development of ourselves as coaches. Uh, many of you may have come across Daniel Goleman and his work on emotional intelligence. So we're gonna talk you through the four elements of emotional competence. And for those of you who aren't familiar, there's four particular areas, as the title suggests. You've got self-awareness, awareness of others, self-management, and relationship management. And Daniel Goleman says that each of these four categories are really important for your emotional intelligence. So should we start by talking a little bit around sort of why emotional intelligence is actually important in the role of a coach and in the role of a leader? That seems like a good place to start. Yeah, so I think emotional um, competence or emotional intelligence is really important in terms of well-being, understanding how to recognise your emotions, understanding how to regulate your emotions, understanding how to get your emotional needs met. Emotional intelligence is really important in terms of how we relate to other people, how we build relationships, how we build connection with others, which again takes us back into the field of well-being. And in the model, when you um, look it up, you'll see that self-awareness and self-management competencies are related to the personal and awareness of others and relationship management are related to that connection with others. They call it social. Yeah. So that, that so it is, it is split into two. So we thought we would talk about it, as Zoe said, first of all, about how you would use it with coaches. And then secondly, about how it relates to your development as the coach. Yeah, and the first place I think in using it with a coachee is probably uh, when two two things. One as um, an area of exploration, uh, leading on to goal setting. So with each of these categories, what you could do is walk through the model. So you might start by explaining the first element around self awareness, and and as we go through, we'll do this as well. So self awareness is really about knowing yourself and the emotions that you are experiencing. So it's about being in tune with your emotions and perhaps what they mean. So people will come to coaching and they may struggle to identify their own emotions. And so that can be work that you need to do with your client in the first place is helping them to recognize all the different sensations that they have and what they mean. So this piece around self-awareness Yes, it can be about knowing your strengths and your competencies, but this particular piece is around knowing your emotional uh, responses and what you're sensing and experiencing in terms of your emotions. Yeah. So, um, should we go into self-management? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so self-management is about how we manage our internal state and not only our internal state, but also our impulses. And so it gets broken down into six sub competencies, emotional self-control, which is how we keep our disruptive emotions and impulses in check, transparency. Um, so that's acting in accordance with our values. And we've done other um, videos on values that you can check out. Adaptability. So how flexible are we? Um, how do we respond to change? Achievement for us who are striving to improve or maintain even um, levels of competence and excellence, how we use our initiatives, so are we ready to act on opportunities, and also how optimistic we are. So when we are going after goals and we might, you know, we might encounter some obstacles or setbacks, how do we deal with those and how do we use our emotions in order to be able to um, motivate us to keep going and overcome those setbacks yeah so and, I, really and I, I would say for me what this means it's about so that with the first category about noticing what your emotions are the second one is about not always necessarily being um you know res responding out of them it's about being able yeah. to notice what they are pause and then choose your response rather than being almost just you know, driven from the from the place of emotion. So really important work, um, you know, for, for leaders and for, for people in the workplace. And, and it's a natural follow on, isn't it, from mm. self-awareness. So, you know, knowing what they are and then choosing your response. Yeah. So then the third area, this awareness of others, 
is it's all very well to know what's going on inside of you, but in order to really connect and relate to people, you need to have an understanding and appreciation of what might be happening inside of others. And we talk about this in the workplace, don't we, in terms of being flexible and understanding people. And obviously with the rise in um, the appreciation of well-being and stress in the workplace, just having an, a, a, an awareness of what people can be going through from an emotional sense helps you to adapt your communication and really connect with people um, at a level that they may need you to connect with as well. It's about knowing when to provide space, knowing when to provide support, um, and just how to show up for people from a place of knowing and appreciating their, their emotional responses. Anything to add on that? No, I think it's, you know, empathy is obviously the word that, yeah. you know, a lot of people would associate with this competency. Yeah. So relationship management, this is about how you use your ability to influence others, how you inspire others, how you can be a catalyst for change, how you um, negotiate and resolve conflicts and how you work together in a team, how, how somebody collaborates with other people. So how do they create synergy in that? And also how do they develop other people too? So when you're working um, with a client and you're starting to look at their goals, you might start to consider which of these competencies is going to be most crucial um, for them to be successful in achieving that goal. Or you might introduce this model with your client, do a brief explanation like we've done of each of them and ask them what it means to them as well. And then ask them to score each of these um, emotional competencies let's say on a scale of naught to 10, and then ask them which one they would like to focus on as a, as a goal in itself. So they might feel um, that they're great at re managing relationships with others. They might think that they have a good awareness of other people's emotions and, and self-aware, but they might feel not so confident around emotional regulation. So in private, they might you know have a lot of emotions going on and, and struggle with that. So that might form the centre of your work together. Yeah, and I think what I like about this particular model is it gives you a language to also talk about what what impact developing these competencies might have. So people don't naturally come to a coaching session and think, oh, I'd like to work on my emotional regulation. <laughs> like it's not something that may even be on their radar. But when you introduce something like this, you can start to, once you've got a language, you can start to say, so if you had more of that what do you what difference do you think that might make to you and it, it gives people a window i guess into some of the things that they might like to develop but you know just didn't have the awareness to think that in the first place that that would necessarily be something that would be of value to them so um so i think introducing these models more around those softer skills for want of a better word can be quite helpful in clients to know what's out there for them yeah, and also relating it to the organization's, um, you know, like behavioral framework, yeah. you know, because most organizations will have some elements of these emotional competencies in them. So if you can help the client to draw connections to them, that might also contribute to their motivation to do something about it. I have had quite a few clients who have said to me that they are um, emotionally numb. Mm. So they they know that there are labels of emotions, but they don't really act, allow themselves to access them. And I think for a lot of us, you know, if you ask anybody, you know, can you, you know, can you name some emotions? Most people wouldn't be able to get beyond five or seven. So part of the work that we can do as coaches with our coaches is really extend people's emotional range and putting it in the context of, you know, this emotional competency can help with that. But you I and I think, were also talking about how this is useful for coaches, weren't we? Yeah, I was just going to add, um, I think what's also um, helpful is enabling people to understand where their emotions come from in support of that emotional regulation. So I, I, I've worked with a lot of clients who are almost sort of emotionally shut down because they're afraid of their emotions like they're afraid if they let out a little bit of anger they're going to go off <laughs> you yeah. know yeah. and that can yeah. be terrifying so actually part of um being able to emotionally regulate is about just understanding well, what, where is some of that and being able to unpack it in a in a safe place but yes let, let's talk about um coaches then so this model was useful as we've said for for leaders is also a really useful model for us as coaches so 
you know, in our role as coaches, we, we need to have high levels of emotional competence, you know, because we are going to be supporting people with a range of different issues. Um, and at, obviously at times, depending on your experience, clients may bring things that you can empathize with that without emotional competence could trigger you. You know, you could um, have your own responses and bring your own judgment and your own uh, sort of opinions and stories into that coaching space. And as we know, one of the critical skills as a coach is being able to be non-judgmental and objective to hold a safe space for your clients. So we can look at this model as coaches and decide, okay, where am I strong? And where do I also need to develop and what work do I need to do? And that's where supervision can come in to help and support you with your own emotional competence and emotional development. Yeah. So we hope that that's uh, a useful reference for you. You can Google it and you'll be able to read more about it or come and join in the coaching crowd and you can have a look at some other resources around emotional intelligence. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Take care.